Like a vast emerald in a setting of waves, Sri Lanka attracts suitors both admiring and jealous. This island, just off the southernmost tip of India, has not been called the Tear of India in vain. The Tamils, originating from the Indian subcontinent, the country lying only 50 kilometers to the south, has always been a tempting lure. From ancient times, these invaders have become part of the island's mythology. First, settling in the north, near Jaffna, the Tamils gradually forced the Sinhalese islanders further and further south. They imported not only Tamil culture, but also Hinduism to the predominantly Buddhist Sinhalese. Although a multiracial and multi-religious melting pot, the Tamils and Sinhalese managed to live together in relative peace. However, in 1956, the Sinhala-only law made Sinhalese the country's official language. In due course, Buddhism was adopted as the state religion. Conditions became insufferable for the Tamils. Over time, the situation deteriorated to a point where pent-up tensions could no longer be suppressed and a civil war began in 1983 one of the most brutal civil wars in human history. The Tamil Tigers rejected mediation proposals for they all maintained Sinhalese cultural, religious and linguistic dominance. Insurrection and guerrilla war followed, leading to the complete separation of the northern and eastern parts of the island from the rest of the country. The following 18 years saw over 100,000 people die, families lose homes, men and fathers, mothers lose children, some forced to join the Tamil Tigers at the age of nine. A team from the International Catholic Charity Aid to the Church in Need went out to witness firsthand the harsh realities that confront the population. This is the first project trip to Sri Lanka. After the 20 year long war, we are now there to see what the needs are and the situation, especially in the north. Surrounded by darkness, it is hard to believe in the light. On hearing about a massacre of 200 people in a bomb attack during prayers in this very church, it is hard to believe in God's mercy as these restored walls continue to bear witness to the mystery of suffering. We have lost four priests in the rush in this eastern province. And the Manar Diocese has lost one priest. Uh, so all these, th all these uh, priests who died have been victims of the uh, war. And one especially, uh, he was a leading uh, person in the citizens committee, leading the civil society against violence, against war and so on. But uh, uh, he had to pay with his life. We have been subjected to a terrible trauma and I must thank uh, the priests and the 
And the religious who have been withstanding this in spite of the problem, nobody ran away. Everybody stayed put in his parish. Although many churches were destroyed, parishioners of this church no longer need umbrellas when attending Mass. Thanks to benefactors from aid to the church in need, they have a new roof, but many Sri Lankans still have no place to worship in. We have seen also the bad situation of all these estate workers where the majority of the Catholic um, population is. These people are more or less kept as slaves with no education, very, very bad living facilities, but quite strong in their faith. There is a need for building small substations, small chapels, so that they can gather together and pray. And of course there is also a big need of catechists, good trained catechists, to keep the community alive. Catechists volunteer their time to work in even the remotest villages. But there are areas where the church has to cope with great hostility, where a catechist or priest is rarely welcome. It is to these areas that lay missionaries go. Lay missionaries are those whom we have uh, sort of posted or, or planted in, uh, in, in the villages, where we don't have a single Christian. Hmm. So they have been there trying to catechize people and uh, through uh, preschools, also, uh, they sort of live among the Buddhists and others and introduce Christ and the Gospel. Weapons and inhumanity of war have scarred no one more cruelly than children. They saw much, too much. They lost their parents and their homes. In this orphanage they try once more to learn the meaning of love. To many children, God's love is made known through the Bible. In this instance, an edition of the Child's Bible, adapted to local cultural traditions, is brought to them by aid to the church in need. The child's Bible was really a blessing to our diocese because the, the children do not uh, read the, the, the big Bible, you know. Uh, and uh